Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here and it's time for my client Paolo's vlog. Uh, and as many of you know from last time, you know, he's, he's a skinny hard gainer. Uh, he's been training quite a while, been training quite a while. We're dealing with some nutritional deficiencies. I'm getting more food. Uh, you know, a few things you'll see here in, in the actual training. We need to work on like his butt comes off the bench here on the bench. Uh, I'm already aware of that. I'm going to have to work with him on that a little bit and get him to learn to set in tighter and to drive that butt down because notice it comes off the bench on every rep, you know, which means again, he is not pushing the bar away. He is, he is trying to drive the bar up using his hips, right? Instead of driving himself into the bench, pushing himself away from the bar which is, you know, easy enough to fix. And he has to learn to just dig in tighter. And what we'll kind of see here, you guys will notice the dancing feet once he's set in, right? Watch it, his feet, see the feet moved after he unracked it. We already know he's loose, okay? And then you see it a few times when those that butt comes up, All right? If a person is tight and they're dug in hard into the floor, they shouldn't be able to move their feet. Shouldn't be physically possible. So stuff that we need to work on. Uh, as far as the other things, you know, something he and I talked about, he's like, well, I gained nothing but fat. And he wasn't really fat, by the way. But he's like, I didn't make any gains when I bulked for him. I'm scared to bulk. I have to gain muscle. And I'm like, I found out from him that he was gaining a kilo per week. So, you know, you guys think about that for a moment. And he said he did it for four months at one point. That's 16 kilos or 15 kilos he gained in like four months. Everyone's laughing who's, who knows how muscle growth works. What's well, about the most a skinny hard gainer is going to gain of muscle? About one kilo in a month. So we know by default, by default in the best case scenario, that was 80% fat. He gained 80% fat. Well, of course you're going to get fat that way when you're bulking. It's, and people, it's because these a lot of guys, especially younger guys, have these ideas that they can speed up a process, right? Instead of going, hey, what's the, the most effective way to do a process? There must be some shortcut. So I'll just do twice as much training. Okay, that, that will do it. If I do twice as much training, I'll gain twice as much muscle. Well, he kind of, he's gone that route too. That doesn't work. If I just gain at four times the rate that I'm told to, I, I, I must be gaining more muscle. Then all they do is gain fat. Which you'll still get big and strong doing that, by the way. You're big and strong doing that. If you care about your body fat at all, though, you don't do that. Okay. Some guys don't, though. They want to just get big quickly, and then they get to that size and stay there a few years with the higher body fat and then trim down. And that actually does work. But you can't be self-conscious about body fat if you go that route. So I've talked to him and like, look, one kilo per month. That's it. All right, that means I don't want you gaining more than 300 grams of body weight per week. Go into a small surplus, and if it stalls, you have any week, you don't make any gains, bump the calories a couple hundred. It's real easy. It's a very simple solution. Of course, he's looking at chronometer and stuff now. He's found, we found nutritional deficiencies, well, you know, which will cause a lot of the problems that we see. So these are fixable, and then he, he overtrains historically. You know, and, and a lot of these younger guys are like, well, don't I need a lift for this muscle or that muscle? No, you're not an intermediate or an advanced lifter. You don't think a few basic movements will grow all your muscles? Come on. Grow everything. So it's pretty straightforward. It's bench day. We do benching. We do dips. We do inverted rows. Doesn't need anything else right now. Doesn't need anything else. All right, what are we doing on this squat day? Doing back squats. We do some goblet squats. Doesn't need anything else. That's it. Programmed correctly for correct volume. We're good. Overhead press day, because again, it's third day, is the press day. Now, I still want him to work on, notice those elbows? They're behind the bar. Mm -mm, I want them further forward. All right, we can't have that. 
can't flare those elbows like that at the bottom. So he's got to get them further forward. Something that has to be fixed. A minor thing to fix. Easier to fix than the bench issue. So what do we do on this overhead press day? He does overhead pressing, does inverted rows. All right, we, we, we need about, you know, we do 10 to 12 total work sets. 13, technically we count the 531 ramp up. So 13 work sets or so. Right, a little more on the benching day because of the dips. Of total work in a day, four days a week. He was doing double that. All right, we do the inverter rows. Now we get over to the deadlifting, which we'll get to in a minute. We're running into the same problem with the low back rounding. And I explained to him, he's like, I understand push the hips back. And I'm like, no, you need, I'm like, look, if you, and I paused it and showed him your butthole is pointed at the floor. It needs to be pointed at the wall behind you. He's like, oh, so like what girls do. I'm like, yeah, I'm like, pretend that you're a stripper whose rent is due tomorrow. Okay. His hips have to be rotated back when we deadlift. You know, otherwise he's just rounding his back. And he's bad about doing it. So on the setup itself, I'm trying to get him used to, you know, on the setup, like, look, when you do a good morning, you have no trouble hinging. You're in that position we want. Good morning down to the bar. When you go to pick up, set up a bar on a deadlift, if you're struggling with that position, do a good morning to the bar. Don't bend down. Don't round down. Hinge only at the hip. Like, already there, he's not doing it. You can see right there, he already grabbed the bar out of the bad position. So if we do that, how are you going to get into position? You better have stupidly strong hamstrings to find a way to pull yourself in. But he's rounding at the waist to pick up, the, to, to reach the bar. If we get our hips further back and rotate them back. Point the butt at the wall behind you, not at the floor. It doesn't occur. Now, he needs more hamstring work to help with this. We have the good mornings in there for that. But, you know, this is going to be a reoccurring problem we're going to fight with a bit on his his deadlift setups. And, and that's okay, but when we get to the good mornings and you watch the good mornings coming up after these deadlifts, you'll notice that he has the ability to hinge. Because right there, he stops hinging, stops pushing back. When he goes to round down, he starts with a hinge, and then he just rounds his low back to reach down to the bar. It's not necessary. If you push the hips further back and rotate them back, it will not happen. All right? It will not happen. But again, I'll have a good morning clip at the end for you guys to watch and you'll see what I'm talking about. He has no trouble doing a good morning, so we know he can physically get his body into the position. So it can be fixed. All right? It can be fixed. But you guys can watch that coming up at the end. Uh, all right, guys, with that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative and I'll talk to you guys next time.